Okay, we're back for round two of color. Um, we're going to just create a blank document in Photoshop. I've opened up Photoshop and I've clicked on the Create New button. Um, this time, let's click on Prints and let's just go with Letter, which is just a regular sized piece of paper. Okay, um, so if I go to my brush tool, we already know that it paints the current color, which your foreground color is set to. We also know if I go over here to my swatches, I can uh, very quickly pull up and use colors that I've saved. If I wanna find a new color, I can click on my color panel or I can click on my foreground color uh, over here to pull up the color picker and uh, manually select a color and then start painting with that color. I'm gonna get rid of all of those items. Um, we also know that I can throw on a solid color um, layer to fill an entire layer with color. Uh, uh, one thing we have not talked about yet uh, are these two tools, the gradient tool and the paint bucket tool. Let's talk about uh, one that might be a little bit simpler than another. I'm gonna pull up an image. Let's pull up this image of a butterfly pull it up in its own document. Um, I'm going to click and hold on the gradient tools to switch to the paint bucket tool. Um, you're probably already familiar with how the paint bucket tool works, but we're gonna cover this uh, just in case. I'm gonna hit Command or Control J to duplicate my background layer into its own layer. What the paint bucket tool does is, uh, it's kind of like the magic wand tool. It works depending on what you click on. So if I have my, let's go to a more colorful color. Let's go to like a more yellowish. That's not good. Here we go. Uh, we're gonna pull up yellow color. Um, and if I hover over uh, just this little circle and click in it, what it does is it will fill in precisely that space uh, and it finds the boundaries because it's it's changed color there. Just like the magic wand tool would have selected that entire space, the paint bucket tool is going to fill that entire space with the color that I had my foreground um, color set to. So I can click over here and it will just do the same thing. We could click on a couple other spaces. Let's do all of these. And this is a very quick way to fill in your image with color with the paint bucket tool. Now, if you mess up, it, remember we're trying to paint inside of the lines. If I were to click on one of the, the actual black boundaries, it fills in everything that was touching. We can, of course, undo that if we want to. And if we switch colors, let's switch to a maybe a, a darker red, uh, it just kind of continues. We can keep painting very quickly with the paint bucket tool, and as it will just fill in the spaces that I'm clicking inside of. That's the paint bucket tool. It's pretty, pretty easy. Um, it just fills in whatever space up until a boundary um, that you click inside of. Now, like, let's let's look right here. I'm gonna click inside of it, and it just paints it away, uh, or it fills in that paint perfectly. But if uh, if that were instead, if it didn't ha if it weren't completely enclosed, I'm gonna paint white right there, and now go back to my paint bucket tool, and now I were to click. Oh, let's not paint white. Let's paint uh, Let's paint this blue. Now I'm to click inside of there. Because it no longer has that boundary, it spills out of the boundary and onto my entire background. That's So that's why the boundaries are very important whenever you're utilizing um, the paint bucket tool. All right, uh, before we get too carried away, we're gonna close that out. Let's go back over here and we'll get rid of our little color fill that we've got. I'm going to start by getting a selection. I want a circular selection, so I'm going to select the elliptical uh, marquee tool, and I want it to be a perfect circle, so I am going to hold out shift. Um, so now if I go to the paint bucket tool and I click, because I had a selection, it works the same way. The selection edges work like the boundary. Um, so that's a quick and easy way to fill out a solid layer of color as well, although that would have been easier to just select the ellipse tool, choose a color manually, and drag it out there. But that's not what we're doing. We'll undo all of that. Let's make a blank layer. So that's the paint bucket tool. Underneath the paint bucket tool is what we call the gradient tool. Uh, the gradient tool allows for you to make a blend of colors from one color to the next. By default, uh, the gradient tool likes to blend from your foreground color to your background color. In my case right now, it's this purplish blue set to black. Uh, that's because my foreground color is purplish blue and my background color is black. 
And so now if I click and drag, you can see that it creates that gradient on my canvas there. Um, I'm currently using a linear gradient right there, but you can see up here in the options bar that there are many other gradients that I could try. We could try a radial gradient, which is more of like a circular gradient. Um, this one is called the diamond one, I think, or is this reflected? If we hover over it, it'll tell you. I sometimes forget the names. Oh, it doesn't want to, that's radial angle gradient. And if we click and drag, it creates an angle depend on the, depending on the way that you drag uh, the gradient. You can kind of see the other ones here as well. And how far you drag it up or down on each gradient will get, create a different uh, look for you. This last one's a little bit fun as well. Um, so depending on what you want, you can select the different types of gradients that are over there. Um, but this one didn't look very great. Uh, so, and that's because we just had, you know, these random colors selected. If you click directly inside of your, your color blend up here uh, in your options bar, it pulls up the gradient editor. And it has all these preset gradients uh, that were available in the drop down list as well. Um, they're all pretty disgusting. Um, you can also load new ones by clicking on the gear. And this last section here are additional gradients that we can add to it. Append will add two. And you can see all of those other gradients that we have down there. Um, but let's say you didn't like any of them. Let's say you wanted to create your own color gradient. Uh, you could manually change your foreground and background colors. But we're going to do something different. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to the color blend. And at the bottom, I have these two little squares. These are called color stops. If I double click it, it will pull up my color picker, which we're already familiar with. Now I could look in here and hunt and try to find colors. Um, but we, if we remember, clear out the images I downloaded. Uh, if I search um, hex code combinations, um, there are things on the internet for you. And you don't even have to use Google Images. You can just look through here that will give you, there are websites dedicated to this exact cause. Um, let's click on this one. Eight beautiful color palettes for your next design project. Oh, it's of course the one that we were utilizing earlier. But we're gonna use this to create our gradient. Let's scroll down a little bit. Um, and let's actually try this one. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll do this one. So this first kind of greenish gray color, grayish green maybe, is A8A7A7. So we'll go back to Photoshop. We'll go down here, A8A7A7. And it pulls up that color. Um, we could add it to our swatches if we wanted to. Let's go ahead and do that. And we'll just call this gray for colorful design. And we'll say okay. Um, so that's that color. Let's go over here to this other side. We'll double click it to pull up the color picker. Uh, we'll go back to the internet. And let's say that this kind of light rosy color is going to work well. CC527A. That's our hex code. Uh, so we'll go down here, highlight the hex code CC527A, and we'll say OK. So now we've got our blend from that color to the other. If we didn't like that gray, we could choose a different color. These are all kind of <laughs> basically red or gray. Um, I guess we could leave it. I was hoping for something a little bit more colorful. Uh, we could still change it by just double clicking on the color stop and choosing something. Let's go to this, this nice little blue. Okay, so here's our gradient. It goes from this kind of grayish blue color to this uh, rosy red. And if I click OK, go to my linear gradient tool and click and drag. I'm holding shift to make it perfectly uh, vertical. You can also go left to right. And how far you pull your gradient across depends on how uh, long the gradient is. Now, if I just did a little bit, if I go just that far, you can see that the blend is very small. But if you go, you can even go past the canvas and it'll get a smoother gradient there. Let's try making one more. Let's see, I'm looking for something that might be a little bit more colorful. Let's do this. Um, all right, we'll poke out the eyeball of that layer and we'll make a new blank layer. All right, uh, and actually this website has them down here at the bottom. So let's try this. Uh, let's find one that we like. Let's say we like this one. We can just copy it, go back into Photoshop, double click our color stop, paste it. And we'll say OK, and we've got that color selected. Um, let's combine that with this one. We'll highlight it, copy it, go back to Photoshop, double click the color stop, and we'll paste it here. 
So now those, those two colors should go well together. We could click and drag to create that color blend, but check this out. I'm going to first get a selection. We're gonna get a perfectly uh, circular selection. And now I'm gonna to go to my gradient tool. I'm gonna click and drag straight up and it creates that gradient inside of my circle. Uh, so if I wanted to now, I could get rid of my selection with Control D and underneath that I could go from left to right to create that fun little colorful gradient there. Um, so that's just a, a fun way to get a design. If I didn't like uh, how it looked here, I could maybe try a radial gradient, go from the middle all the way to the outside. I'm not really the biggest fan of that, but it does kind of look a little bit like a floating planet. Um, for your lab work this week, what I'm having you guys doing is to create a colorful uh, design using gradients and selections. So you can do that same thing that I just did Gradient tools here. Uh, you can click on your gradient editor and you can manually create your own gradient. Think about the color wheel uh, to choose which colors go well together. Um, Adobe actually does have a, a website, color.adobe.com, um, designed just for that purpose to help you find interesting color schemes. Um, you can hit explore and find good color schemes from other people as well, or you can create your own by clicking and dragging around and it will give you the hex codes down here at the bottom. All right, um, let's do something else. Let's let cancel, uh, cancel. Let's say that I, I liked this when it was like this. If I was done with this project, I would save it. Um, we're gonna save this as a JPEG and we'll call it colorful designs or design. Um, if I was not done with this, I would save it as a PSD, but because I am done, I know I'm not, no longer going to change it. We will change it, at, uh, save it as a JPEG. Um, and if you wanted it to be a little bit more colorful, we could throw on a hue saturation adjustment layer too. My computer, oh, here we go. I have to first say OK. Hue saturation, we could pull up the saturation. You can see how it changes um, the image when we play around with it there. All right, let's close that out. Um, the other thing we're doing this week, your project for this week, is to color in a line drawing. Now, Adobe has a, a very cool thing that you can check out on how to do that, but let's, let's play around with it in Photoshop a little bit. Here's a sneaker. Um, and here's how you're going to do this. You're going to make a blank layer. Um, you're going to go to your brush tool. You can also use the gradient tool. You can also use the paint bucket tool. Any of your color, uh, your coloring tools will help you to color in your design. Um, but I want to show you something real quick. If I uh, select my brush and I choose a color, let's say that I want, I'm going to paint parts of this shoe red. So I'll get this dark burgundy red. Um, if I just start painting, here's where things are going to start messing up. Check this out. It covers over uh, the line drawing part, the part that's black. But if I change the blending mode of my layer, to darken, and now I start painting, it doesn't cover up the line drawing. So I could paint to my heart's content. Um, I, I would probably zoom in. This would probably be much better done with the, um, with the paint bucket tool. Uh, but this would allow me to paint this in and out. Um, now, if I messed up right there, I could go to my eraser tool and erase that, or you also could use uh, the mask, masking tool, uh, mask feature in Photoshop that we talked about last week. We'd first have to add a mask to this layer, and then you could paint black in the mask to get rid of it, but here we go. And we could just paint this over and over. Now, if I mess up, of course, we can just mask it out. So go to your mask, paint black, and it will go away. Um, so yeah, that would help you to finish painting this whole thing out. You're gonna, I would use a new layer for each color. Remember to make a new layer, set the blending mode to darken. This one we'll call this red. I would probably also change the names of them. You can change the name. Uh, you can also change uh, the little color highlight. Let's make this one blue. We'll also make it a, a blue color highlight. If we made another one, set the blending mode to darken. We'll make this one green. This is our RGB shoe. Double click the text and you can change the name of the color there too. So if I click in here, go to my color tool, we'll select a green and now I can start painting green elsewhere. Now, if you did want to use the paint bucket tool, 
Uh, watch what happens if I use it now. Because I'm basically on this empty layer, if I go to my friend the paint bucket tool underneath the gradient and click right here, it's gonna fill up everything. Uh, and that's because this layer doesn't have those lines. So I'd have to go back to my background layer where the lines actually are in there and then I can click and actually paint in with the little lines there. Uh, so paint bucket tool could be useful for this one. Brush tool is also useful. Using the blending mode is extremely useful too. Let's pull up another picture. Uh, did we use this sugar skull design yet? Here we go. Uh, always a good idea to duplicate your background layer. Um, if I were trying to design this with um, the paint bucket tool, I could zoom in. And as long as everything is uh, has a boundary around it, I can click and design this pretty easily. Um, there we go. Let's get the middle to be a nice yellow. We'll use our color panel over here. Select the nice yellow out of it, and we can fill that in. Uh, maybe we want the middle and these parts to be yellow too. If I wanted to do something a little bit more precise, oh, by the way, we can kind of see what parts of it were messing up. Now, if I wanted, if I forgot what this exact shade of cyan or blue was, this would be an excellent time to use the eyedropper tool, and then I could go back to my great, uh, my paint bucket tool, click in there to fill it out. Um, Good, that was an important mistake to make. When I use the eyedropper tool, it manually changed my foreground color. Same problem is gonna be over there. Where was it? There it is. Got that tool, or that color pulled up. We're gonna make sure we have our paint bucket tool selected and we can click on it manually. Boy, this one just doesn't wanna go, does it? Um, the other way to paint these out, like we said, is to make a blank layer, set the blending mode of the layer to darken, and then you can manually paint uh, this out. Let's choose kind of a, a rusty orange and we can just go in here and paint this. And because the blending mode is set to darken, it's not going to go over the lines because we can't darken black. That's an important thing to note there. So we can just manually paint this. Paintbrush would be faster, um, but this one gives you a little bit more precise control over what you are doing. Make sure when you're designing that you use colors that go well together. You want everything to look nice. Make sure you choose an image that challenges yourself. Feel free to draw your own image uh, if you would like to as well. We can tell that this one would, would take a little while. Uh, let's do something else. Let's say that I wanted to make a, a gradient uh, in here. We'll make a new layer for that. Um, and we already know gradient tools combined with my bucket tool. Uh, this is the gradient we used last, but let's do a different color. Uh, let's choose kind of this, mm, we'll go to, I'm having a tough time deciding. I guess we'll go to this pink, uh, and we want it to be a darker pink over there, so I'm going to select, copy the hex code from here, from over here, paste the hex code, double click the color stop, paste the hex code, and we're just going to go straight down, we'll change the lightness value of it. So what I want to do is I want to create a gradient uh, in this mustache. If I click and drag, it covers up the whole thing. Oh, I wanted a linear gradient. It covers up the whole exact thing. Let's control Z that. Uh, so if you want to create a gradient in your color, which I highly encourage you to do, first get a selection. I'm going to use the magic wand tool to select the entirety of the inside here. Uh, make sure contiguous is checked. The reason I clicked on it and didn't select anything is because I don't have that layer that has the line drawing selected. But now if I click in there, It selected everything. Contiguous is checked. Our tolerance is probably too high. Or, yeah, let's select the tolerance of 10. Click in the white space. That's perfect. We can zoom in and see if our selection is missing any pieces, which it is. We already know how to modify our selection using uh, the shift and the alt keys or the options bar. Uh, but anyway, if I go back up here to my layer that I made it for my gradient now and I click and drag now, it only places the gradient inside of uh, the actual color there. But I can tell where it was messed up. So I should have had a better selection first. Um, but that is one thing that can help you um, if you want to create more interesting color dynamics there. All right, so in this video, we talked about the paint bucket tool. We talked about the gradient tool. We talked about the gradient editor uh, tool. We talked about color stops. Um, we reviewed a little bit of information regarding hex codes, swatches, and color in general. Uh, your project for this week is to color in a line drawing. 
once, like I said, color the whole thing. Make sure that you challenge yourself. Um, stay, try to stay inside the lines as long as it's artistic. Um, and use colors that go well together. And if you're not sure how to do that, use the internet to your advantage. Uh, in Canvas, there's a couple links in there that might help you. Um, that's it on color. Uh, there's a whole lot of other stuff to read through about color as well. Um, I think this is a, a fun thing to talk about with Photoshop, but that is it for now.